This is the notes for section 11.3, quick and easy factoring. If you haven't done so already, make sure you pause the video and read the section before continuing on. Um, so factoring polynomials is something that we're going to spend a little bit of time with. Uh, the, the idea of factoring polynomials is it's the process of taking a, any polynomial and writing it as a product of factors. So in other words, um, things that we can, or, or sums that we can multiply together uh, such that we will get the polynomial back. So it's just a different form of writing that polynomial. So we have an example of a standard form polynomial and here's the factored form. So what we want to be able to do today is to go from the standard form to the factored form for a couple different, uh, in using a couple different of the, the easier methods that we have for factoring. All right, when we're trying to factor a polynomial, the first thing that we're going to try and do is we're going to try and factor out a monomial. So is there one term that evenly divides into the other terms that are in that polynomial. We're looking for the greatest term that does that. So you're looking at both the coefficient and at the variables, and we're going to try and pull out the largest term that evenly divides into both of those uh, values. Uh, before I go through example one, you might want to just pause and, and reread example one on page 746 in your book, and then I'll go through this example here. Example one, we're asked to factor 6x to the fourth plus 24x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and factor out a monomial. To do that, I'm going to start by looking at the numbers. I have a 6 in my first term, and I have a 24 in my second term. If you think about that, the largest number that evenly divides into both 6 and 24 is 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a 6 out of, I'm going to factor a 6 out of those two terms. Then if I look at my x's, I have an x to the 4th and an x squared. Okay? If, if you have an x to the 4th and x squared, they would share an x squared, because you can think of x to the 4th as being x squared times x squared, and this is x squared over here. So they have an x squared in common, so I can pull that out as well. So if I, if I do that, if I pull 6x squared out, what that means is I have to divide each one of these terms by 6x squared. So if I take 6x to the fourth and divide it by 6x squared, and I also take 24x squared and divide it by 6x squared, what I'm left with is, on this first term, I would have x squared. And on the second term, I would have 4. Therefore, I can rewrite this as 6x squared times x squared plus 4. And I've factored out a monomial out of that one. The second thing we want to look for when we're doing factoring is we want to look at special cases. So you know, a lot of times you'll be able to look at a polynomial, and you may not be able to factor out a monomial. So then the, the question would be, what's the next thing that I want to try and do? And that would be to look for these special cases. And there's two special cases that we have. One is the difference of squares factoring theorem, and the other one is the binomial square factoring theorem. Now, we've spent uh, quite a bit of time, really, uh, talking all about the binomial square theorem. Basically, when we get to that one, and I'll talk about that one in a little bit, but we're, we're doing the opposite of the binomial square. Um, but let's first look at the difference of squares. The uh, difference of squares is any time you have the difference between two squares, like this, a squared and b squared, okay, we can always write it as a plus b, and a minus b. And the reason for doing that is, if you think about foiling this out, I get a squared, and then my middle terms are ab and minus ab, and then finally b squared. Well, what happens is that plus ab and a minus ab cancel out. So when we have difference of squares, um, we want to be able to write it like this over here. And I have an example of that down here at 9x to the 4th minus 121. 
we can take to, to do that, we're, we're always going to take the square root of this one, which is 3x squared, and the square root of this one, which is 11. Okay. Also, you can see it in a little easier one with x squared minus 36. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 36 is 6. Okay. Um, the, the binomial square theorem is, like I said, it's moving backwards through the binomial square. So if I, if I know I have something that looks like this, okay, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So in other words, we have a perfect square here, we have a perfect square here, and the middle term of the trinomial is 2 times the square root of that first one times the square root of that second. So it's always trying to figure out if that middle term of a trinomial is, is equal to that 2ab. So that's what you want to look for when you're doing that. Well, if that's the case, we can always write it as a plus b squared. Okay. Now, we, we've always been working the other way. We've always started with a plus b squared and gone to this. Now we're going to work backwards. So here's a couple examples of that x squared minus 10x plus 25, we can write that as x minus 5 times x minus 5 because you'll notice that this middle term of negative 10x is equal to 2 times x times 5. Okay? Um, and then same with this one down here. I can rewrite that as the square root of this and the square root of this and then add it together because that middle term is 2 times 2x times 7. To look for the binomial square theorem, you're, what you want to do is you want to think about if you see the first term is squared and you see the last term is squared, that's when you want to really be, be cognizant or, or pay attention to whether or not you could be using the binomial square factoring theorem. <laughs>
2x plus 1 quantity squared. So if we have a polynomial, we, we've tried to take out a monomial, and we've tried looking at the different special cases, and we still don't have it completely factored, then what we want to do is we want to look at the methods that were presented in the, the other two factoring videos and see if we can factor the quadratic. So if we have a quadratic, we want to use those methods. In this case, I do have a quadratic where, where the value in front of x is 1. Therefore, I can, I can use the method from that first of those two videos. Therefore, uh, negative 21 would have to be equal to a times b. Four would have to be equal to a plus b. So I'm looking for two numbers that I can multiply together to get negative 21 and add together to get 4. So if I look at that, I've got 1 and negative 21. They're pretty far apart. I go to 3 and, and 7. I need one of those to be negative. Well, if I have a positive 4 here, I'd want the bigger one to be positive and the smaller one to be negative. So if I look at the difference between those, since it's four units, um, it would make sense that, that negative 3 and 7 would be the two that I would choose. Therefore, I can factor this into x minus 3 times x plus 7. All right, finally, I'd like to take a look at the idea of prime polynomials. Uh, the definition of a prime polynomial is a polynomial over a set of numbers is prime if it cannot be factored into polynomials of lower degree whose coefficients are in the set. So if we, we're always looking at whether a polynomial is prime over a certain set of numbers, say the integers, the whole numbers, the real numbers, um, the uh, all, all complex numbers. It could be over any set of values, but it's always over a set of numbers, okay? And the coefficients, when we, when we factor it, have to be members of that set. So if we're looking at factoring over the integers, which is basically, for the most part, what we've been doing, all of the coefficients of the, of the polynomial in factored form have to be integers, okay? But if we're looking at it over, say, the real numbers, the coefficients could be any real numbers. So writing a polynomial as a product of factors with coefficients in this set is called factored over that set. So if we want to factor a polynomial over the set of integers, we, all the coefficients would have to be integers. If we want to factor it over the real numbers, all the coefficients would have to be real numbers. Okay? A polynomial is factored completely when all the factors are prime polynomials. So if I look at each of the individual factors, they would have to be prime polynomials. All right, so let's take a look at this final example then. It says, is x squared minus 6 prime over the integers, and is it prime over the real numbers? Well, if I look at this, x squared minus 6, it doesn't directly follow it. But it kind of does. If, if, I'm, if I'm looking at it, it kind of looks like it follows the um, special case of difference in squares. And it actually does. It's just that the, these, if this is my a squared and this is my b squared, it's just that b is going to be equal to the square root of 6, whereas a is going to be equal to x. So if I were to factor this, I would factor it as x plus the square root of 6 times x minus the square root of 6. So that would be in factored form. So the question, is it prime over the integers? The answer to that one would be no, because the coefficients aren't integers. However, the answer to this one would be yes, because the coefficients are real numbers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.